the game that I'm about to show you is part of a chess league that I play in for my chess club. It's a classical format, so we have an hour, 20 minutes each. And as you can see from the title, this is a must win game. To provide a bit of context, um, at my chess club, there's loads and loads of different teams. We've got like 10 different teams. and I normally play for the third team on board two. And the first team, uh, basically, they, they needed to win this game so that they can tie for first in the first division of the league. There's like 10 different divisions, but they're in the top division and they were second and they need to win this game to tie for first and then go into a playoff. Now, because it's currently Easter, a lot of the regular first team players weren't able to make the game. So I got an email about a week before uh, asking if I could play on board five. And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll play. And on the way to the game, I got a lift with um, our board two. I've played against him before uh, in a club champ, no, in a cup game actually. And I drew to him. He's rated like 2200. He's really good. I actually have the game on the channel. I'll link it above here if you're interested. But um, I said to him on the way there, I have no idea what I'm going to play if my opponent plays d4. Which he did play, because I normally play the King's Indian defense, you know, something along the lines of this. Objectively, though, at this level that I'm playing at now, it's just not good enough. It really isn't good enough. So I was saying, I've got no idea what to play. Maybe I'm just going to play a hippo. And if you don't know, the hippo is basically just uh, fee and kettling both bishops e6, e6, bringing the knights in, h6, a6, and you kind of just sit back and wait for your opponent to attack you. But because my team needed to win this game, I'm, I, I kind of need to win, especially because my opponent's a bit lower rated than me. I've got 100 points on him, which isn't astronomical, but it means that I should be trying to push for a win, even as black. And so my teammate in the car recommended the Slav defense because he knows that I play the Karo Khan against e4. So he said, why don't you try the Slav c6? And I went, huh, that's not a bad idea because a lot of the time your opponent will follow d4 with e4 and then you just get a Karo. And if your opponent doesn't do that, then a lot of the same principles of the Karo Khan apply in the Slav, except for a few lines which he actually walked me through during the journey. My opponent went knight f3, which I was expecting c4. So I responded with knight f6. I could have gone d5. The move of order isn't really important. But here my opponent played c3. And I was like, whoa, you're really not going to take the center? So I went d5. And we just have a symmetrical structure. And this is quite instructive, really, because my opponent is lower rated than me. When I play higher rated players, generally my principle is to go at them like as aggressively as possible. Because if we play some symmetrical structure, some positional struggle, they're going to beat me. So I can't allow them to do that, and I need to go at them. Here, I think my opponent should have done the same thing, because now we have a symmetrical structure. And he goes for a London. Bishop f4, bishop f5. I could have gone knight h5 to attack the bishop, but I assumed he would just retreat it and go, what is your knight doing on h5? So I, I just went bishop f5, and I was like, what? what is the point? Why is he not trying to beat me? We have knight to d2, and here I could go knight d7, but I was like, okay, let's just go e6. Um, let's not do exactly what he's doing, because copying his every move probably isn't a great idea. He plays h3. So in the event of knight h5, he can now drop his bishop back to h2. I was not really worried about my opponent playing knight h4. I went knight bd7. Because if my opponent plays knight h4, well, I have knight h5... But I was just going to drop my bishop back to g6. And if we have the exchange, then we have a bit of imbalance in the position now. 
My opponent has the bishops. I have double pawns. But I have a really strong rook. And I don't think my opponent's going to castle queenside. So although the computer objectively says it's a bit better for white, because I'm the higher rated player, I kind of want a bit of imbalance so that I can attack my opponent. So he doesn't do that. After e6, h3, knight d7, my opponent goes e3. And here, well, actually back here, the typical London move, because my opponent's playing the London, and I'm also playing the London, is to go bishop d6. But then I thought that allows knight to e5. And when I put a knight on d7, my opponent can take on f7, and the bishop hangs after king takes. Also, my opponent kind of wants me to go bishop d6, so that knight e5 comes with a bit more venom. So if I play something like queen c7, e3, knight d7, I can't take. Say he plays, I don't know, bishop here. I can't. Well, here I can, because I have enough attackers. I'm doing a terrible job of this. But say he goes here. I can't take because I'm getting forked, right? So he wants my bishop on d6 so that I can't take. For that reason, I decided I'm going to put my bishop on e7. So if he throws a knight into e5, I'm just going to take it. Because after pawn takes, my bishop isn't on d6 to get forked. I, I, I don't play the London, and I rarely play against the London, because I normally play a King's Indian, but I've been trying to switch up my repertoire, and just from watching a lot of YouTube, I see Bishop D6, Knight E5 all the time, and my thinking was, maybe my opponent doesn't know the difference between these moves, because in my head the difference was Bishop D6 allows Knight E5, but if I go Bishop E7... Sure, it's a bit of a less active square. But my opponent's going to have to come up with a plan now. Again, knight h4, I'm happy to do this. Computer doesn't like it, I like it. Because I want to try and attack. So, bishop e7, my opponent goes knight e5. Which I think is an inaccuracy. Because I can just take it. Here, I'm expecting bishop takes. And... I can probably castle, maybe I can play queen to b6, but the point is, he spent two moves getting his knight in, I spent two moves taking the knight, it's an equal trade, and I've got still got a very strong grip over e4, so worst comes to worst, we've got, a good, we've got an equal position, and I can try and outplay him. I also have more pieces developed right now, so I think if anyone's better, it's probably me, very, very slightly, but probably me. My opponent takes with the pawn. I was very surprised. This is like a little dopamine move. Like, yeah, you attack my knight. And the knight, initially I was planning on bringing it to d7. To put, pre to put pressure on the pawn. Support c5. Maybe even bring my knight into c5 to try and get into my opponent's territory. But I went for knight e4. Now, here, if knight takes, I have bishop takes, attacking g2. And my opponent, he can go f3 to kick the bishop out, in which case I'm happy, because the dart squares around his king are very weak now. He could play bishop d3. I calculated bishop takes g2, and I came to the conclusion that it wasn't any good, because after rook g1, bishop takes h3, rook takes g7... My opponent has too much play on the king side, and my king struggles to find safety here. My bishop also can't get back into the game because coming to f5 would ruin the pawn structure. So my bishop's a bit stranded as well. So, in the event of bishop d3, I, I don't have to take. I can take, and the position is basically symmetrical apart from the fact that my opponent has double d-pawns and his bishop isn't quite as good as mine, because mine's got more scope. I could also retreat the bishop back to g6 and try and get the idea that I'd spoken of previously. But I didn't have to worry about that, because my opponent didn't take. Now, we could go bishop d3, but like I showed you in the previous variation, 
of me putting a bishop on d6 and a knight on d7, this knight takes f2. And the queen's connection to the bishop is cut off. I attack the queen, the rook, and the bishop. Takes, takes. I'm up a pawn. My opponent can't castle. And his pawn structure is completely shattered. So, it's not easy for my opponent here. I expected knight takes e4 or bishop e2. Bishop e2 I was a bit more worried about because I didn't know exactly what I was going to do in this position. I don't want to take. That kind of helps my opponent. It kind of alleviates the pressure. Queen b6 would be a move that I would want to play just to put pressure on my opponent's b-pawn. But my opponent went knight f3. And here I was a bit stunned. Because this knight can't go to e5 anyway. And he's just moved this knight twice. He's using up a lot of tempo now. And I have queen b6. Which g5 is, an, is another move. I don't, I don't understand the London enough to know when to go g5. So I went queen b6. And very concretely I realised. How does white defend b2? b3 isn't playable because c3 hangs. Rook b1 isn't playable. Not because of knight takes f7. Because after king takes, bishop takes, queen takes, my opponent has two pieces for a rook and a pawn, which is good for my opponent. Instead, it's knight takes c3. The point is there's a fork. My opponent has to take. And then queen takes, queen takes, bishop takes. And I go up and exchange rather than two pieces for a rook. So rook b1 isn't playable. So how else do you, can you defend the pawn? Well, you could go queen c2, but then there's discoveries of knight g3, which is what I had planned. The rook is under attack and the queen is under attack. The queen has to move and I win the rook. So queen c2 isn't playable. The computer gives queen e2 as a potential. I didn't even consider this because it blocks the bishop in. It just looks like a horrible move. And how is my opponent planning to castle? So there were two moves in my mind. First was bishop queen c1. It defends the pawn and doesn't walk into any discoveries. Here I have ideas of knight c5 looking at the weak d3 square. I also have ideas of c5 just taking more central space. Maybe trying to go to c4 to again play this maneuver to get on to d3 and you know really cause some problems in my opponent's position. The problem with my opponent playing knight f3 is that he needs to trade because my knight causes too many problems in his position. So I expected queen c1. In my head that was the best move. My opponent chose queen to b3. And I thought queen b3 was completely losing because of knight c5. Computer says it's an inaccuracy. It's only because it wants g5, bishop h2, and then knight c5. Again, like I said, I don't understand the London enough to know when to do that. The point is you have to play g5 first because then the knight helps with the defense of g5. Whereas playing knight c5 first, g5 is no longer playable because you don't have enough defenders of the g5 square. Right? I didn't know this. My point is, I attack the queen. The queen cannot go anywhere without some kind of discovery or attack unless it goes to d1 and then hangs the b2 pawn. And then I'm completely winning, right? So my opponent has no choice but to take. And after I take back, there's a big problem. These pawns are way too weak. They're way too weak. I'm threatening ideas, say he plays a nothing move. I'm threatening concretely knight b3. The knight can't be taken because the rook hangs and the rook is under attack. The rook only has one safe square and then a2 falls. b2 is going to fall and then c3 is probably going to fall. And I'm going to be up way too many pawns and it's going to be an easy conversion. So... Knight b3 is a threat. Knight a4 is also a threat. Because how do you defend b2? If you play b3, c3 hangs. Rook b1 isn't playable because the bishop takes. 
you have no moves to defend the b2 pawn unless again you advance and hang c3 so my opponent has to be very accurate here and he finds the best move knight d4 and just then um, for the record I thought that the only move here was a3 because after knight a4 attacking b2 it's ugly but you can play rook a2 defending and if bishop b1 then rook a1 and you can't take because the bishop hangs so the bishop has to retreat and maybe I would do that just so I get it on g6 rather than f5 and then we go back here, and then I continue with something. And although it's ugly, it's not easy. Something I didn't actually consider in the game is just queenside castle. And I didn't consider this because I thought it was too problematic after knight back to c5, looking at b3. And with the bishop cutting the king off, white is probably going to have to run the king back this way, which just doesn't look right. So this is a very critical position. And by the way, a3, knight b3 actually wins, which I didn't previously consider. Again, the rook is under attack. It can only go to d1. But after bishop c2, the rook is trapped. It has no squares to go to. Like, everything is cut off. If my opponent had played a3, I'm confident I would have found this because I had so much time on the clock. But in my head, a3 was the only move. Knight d4 is played, which the computer says is the best move. It attacks the bishop. And it defends b3. So knight b3, like we previously established, is no longer a threat. So I just drop the bishop back. And my argument is that my opponent still has all the same problems in the position. And I'm going to go knight a4. And this pawn is going to fall. I expected h4, which is the computer's favourite move, and I was going to respond with h5, or h6, and then h5, bishop, h7, and just argued that it's the same thing anyway, and my opponent, again, needs to find a way to defend himself. Probably a3, and again, if knight to a4, queenside castle, or rook a2, but as we've established already, this isn't an easy fix. There's still way too many problems in white's position. Instead, my opponent went b4. And um, after I played bishop g6, I actually went to the toilet, just because I needed the loo. And I came back to the board. I saw b4, and I just stood there. I, I, I just stood over the board, like, like, just looking like for a solid minute, like, what? really and even if the computer isn't telling you this is a mistake because obviously there's no computers when you're playing a real life game you look at this position and you go there's no way there's no way you can play b4 c3 is too weak and the attack on my knight is completely superficial because i want to move it anyway and i play the accurate knight to e4. I considered knight to a4 attacking c3 but then king d2 whilst ugly does protect c3. It does keep the bishop open which I which is why I considered it because knight e4 blocks the bishop but king d2 is now no longer a move and rook c1 can't be played. Well there's actually this but just more, even simpler, rook takes a2. The other downside of knight a4 is that it blocks the rook's attack of the a2 pawn. Rook c1 doesn't actually work, again, because of this tactic. And there's just a pin. And if king d2, rook takes a2 check. And the king can't keep an eye on the rook. So you're just going to lose it. But... But... I decided on knight e4 because I thought it was way simpler. And the problem is that c3 is just hanging. And again, rook c1 can't be played. King d2 can't be played. And he needs to defend the pawn. And there's only one move. The pawn can never advance either because of bishop takes b4 check. 
which is why b4 was just such an odd move. Again, similar to d takes e5, hitting my knight, it's just like a dopamine move, just getting an attack on the knight, which I want to move anyway. So my opponent plays the only move to defend the pawn, knight e2, which blocks the bishop in, makes it impossible for white to castle anytime soon. And it allows rook to a3. And I was very happy with rook a3, because I now have a double attack on the pawn, and a2 is still under attack. So after rook c1, I can just take on a2. Again, there is tactics here where the knight hangs, but even simpler is rook takes a2. My opponent goes f3, and I take. My opponent has no way to defend the c3 pawn apart from rook c1, which we've established hangs the a2 pawn. So I just take the pawn, and after knight takes, Yes, you can play rook takes, but after rook takes, you, my opponent can defend the b4 pawn, and he's only down one pawn. So, as you're probably screaming at the computer right now, the move is bishop takes b4, and the knight is double attacked, pinned, the only move to defend it is rook c1, in which case you just take anyway, and I'm up a B pawn and a C pawn, and my opponent's king can't find safety. This bishop is terrible because of this very dubious D takes C5 move, and A2 is probably also going to fall. So after the move bishop takes B4, my opponent resigned, and it was quite a quick game, actually. It only lasted like an hour and a half, which for classical games is quite quick. And I was very happy with this because I'd never played the Slav before. Um, and I always struggle against the London. But I was really pleased with Bishop E7, which I thought was a really interesting move to try and take my opponent out of theory and bait him into Knight E5 which he played, and whilst my position is not winning here, my opponent has to be very accurate, and I think knight f3 kind of was the losing move, in my opinion, because whilst b4 is very losing, here even, there's way too much pressure. My opponent has to be incredibly accurate with moves like a3 and queenside castle, or a3 rook a2, and you don't want to play that, because you're just going to suffer, even if you survive, for the time being. So, after I finished my game, the guy that gave me a lift on board two, he actually also won his game, I think like a minute or two before my game was over. So we went 2-0 up, and then we won board six and board four, because I was board five. We won all those boards, went 4-0 up, the six boards in total. Our board one lost and board three drew. But after boards six and four won, it was game over because we were 4-0 up. And even if our opponents beat our other two players, it'd still be 4-2 to us. So the team won as a whole and tie for first in the Birmingham Chess League Division 1, which, I mean, it's a very strong league. Um, you feel free to check the website, but like, there's some really strong players. Like, our board one was rated like 2300-ish. Insane player. And yeah, I was very happy with the game. I hope you guys can take some kind of um, instructive advice from this in terms of playing against the London because I'm essentially playing a London as well but I try to modify it a little bit with moves like bishop e7 not playing h6 and trying to again take my opponent in and make him make small inaccuracies to give me what turned out to be an overwhelming advantage 
So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.